Hello, my name is Nathan, and you're watching the Unlocking Data in Supply Chain Management YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use a simple modeling tool to explore hypothetical future supply shift scenarios right after this. So today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Instead of diving into a detailed transportation model, I'm going to show you how you can use a simple modeling tool to explore what new supply profiles might look like in the future. With COVID-19 interrupting supply chains, especially those that were highly reliant on China earlier this year, Many businesses are questioning whether they should reduce their over-reliance on China and shift some of their supply to countries like India or other countries in Southeast Asia. A tool like the one I'm about to show you can help in the early stages of the process of exploring what new supply profiles might look like. So let's jump right into it. In this baseline scenario, we have 65% of the volume coming from China. And the other countries in the supply profile are scattered across Asia. We have the two biggest ports in China, so Beijing and Shanghai. And there are four other ports in China as well, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Ningbo, and Qingdao. In this map, you can see all of the ports in the current supply profile, and we have the countries color-coded. I've also included filters here so that we can see what new supply profiles will look like if we change the volume in the different countries. So let's explore what happens when we change some of those volumes. So. If we decrease the China volume by 50%, then China is still the number one supply country. But as you can see in the ports view here, the major port in Japan, Tokyo, is gaining on the number one port spot. If we increase the Japan volume, by three times, so 200%, then Japan becomes the biggest supply country with 50% of the total volume. And the top two China ports drop to number two and number three. If we increase the Korea volume by 10 times, so by 900%, approximately 900%, then Korea is about 14% of the total supply. And the biggest port in Korea is about 10% of the total supply, which is the number three port in Asia at that point. So a tool like this can help you change the volumes and see as long as the proportions with the uh, different ports remain the same within each country, it can help you see how different supply profiles might look like in the future if you change the volumes in the different countries. What this tool doesn't show you is how the risk changes. So presumably, if you're moving some of your volumes out of China because of an over-reliance on China, then by increasing volumes coming from other countries, you can reduce the probability that you'll face major disruption in your supply chain. And this tool doesn't really help you do that. You would have to dive deep and do more uh, in-depth risk analysis to do that but it can help you 
see envision how different supply profiles might look if the different proportions in the different countries did change. So in summary, tools like this can be helpful for exploring a variety of supply scenarios in a quick manner. I'm going to include a link to this dashboard in the description of this video. So if you want to click around on it, go to that link. And if you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And last but not least, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. Goodbye for now.